We Can Do What We Like by Matthew Shelby Our mother and father have just gone on strike. They said we can do whatever we like. They're tired of telling us to pick up our toys. Worn out from asking, please keep down the noise. Weary from saying, eat your dinner while it's hot. Exhausted from all the whys and why nots. Fatigued from all our constant demands. Getting so little done of their original plans. So they are no longer now washing our clothes, cleaning our rooms or wiping our nose. No longer the maid, the butler or cook. They're just going to read their newspaper and book. And once they've finished reading, they said, they're spending a month just sleeping in bed. Up on their door there now hangs a sign, Do not disturb or cross over this line. My sister and I think this is just great. No rules and no chores but the ones we create. We decided to think up some of our own. One would be happy to follow at home. Rule number one that we wish to be known, Our house is declared a parent-free zone. With a pad and a pencil we started to write some other new guidelines that sounded all right. We can stay up quite late while eating a treat. We don't have to wash up after we eat. We can keep our rooms messy, our things on the floor. There's no such thing as a job or a chore. Teeth can be brushed just once a day. Our toys where we drop them is where they can stay. We can watch the TV whenever we like. We don't have to go for a ride on our bike. Next for our breakfast we had ice cream and jelly, eating as much would fit in our belly. Our used dirty plates were left on the table, as then it was time to watch TV on cable. For lunch it was biscuits and cream covered buns, much better than fruit with soft sour plums. Then back to the lounge chairs to watch some more shows, and following that we had a short doze. Dinner was candy and chips in a dish, far tastier than carrots and boring old fish. We finished our meal with some extra dessert, stopping only when our stomach started to hurt. We then left the kitchen to look after itself, sure it would be cleaned by some fairy or elf. For now it was time to get out and play, and not one little thing did we put back away. Train sets and building blocks we bought from the store, along with toy cars, now covered the floor. There were dolls and some pirates and large dinosaurs. We emptied out every single one of our drawers. We found a container full of weird plastic bugs, which included some spiders and a couple of slugs. With my sister's best doll, I removed its large head, replacing it with a green beetle instead. With my brother's best car for its wheels and screws, I swapped them all out for some fancy doll shoes. In the middle of the room where everything was going, the pile of our toys was continually growing. Things were starting to get in a jumble, as Muddle Toy Mountain looked ready to tumble. With midnight approaching, we called this day done. What a day it had been, what a day full of fun. Day number two started outside with a swing and a jump and a very short slide. Dressed in outfits that did not really match, we made some mud balls and then we played catch. Into the sand pit to play into potter, after building some castles we filled it with water. We ran through the house all covered in grit, we did not wash off, not one little bit. A new change of clothes, the six for the day, as those we had on were dirty and grey. That evening a bath which we filled to the rim, time to enjoy a good splash and a swim. When the bathroom then flooded, we escaped through the door, leaving wet footprints all over the floor. And now that we're clean from our toes to our cheeks, no need to wash for a couple of weeks. Into the craft drawer for our next big project, where making a mess was our chosen subject. Pens, papers and crayons and a few pots of glue are the things we could make, the things we could do. Some scissors and tape for our favourite game, of cutting things up to stick together again. We tore up some paper and chopped styrofoam balls and threw coloured glitter all over the walls. We struck stickers on windows that had not been approved, the kind of stickers not easily removed. We painted our fingers and painted our toes. I painted my sister, she painted my nose. All afternoon we kept going on until everything in the craft drawer was gone. We then looked around and what do you know? It looked like a room from Mum's renovation show. The days went on by, and with rule number one, we did what we wanted, we kept having fun. But our fun was now fading, starting to wear off. I had a cold and my sister a cough. We were starting to also get really quite smelly, 
and we both had enough of watching the telly. Maybe we should have some eaten some fruit, as we didn't feel well and were starting to toot. The fridge was quite empty, with little to show, and the vegetables there were starting to grow. The pile of used dishes was now very tall. There was nothing more left in the cupboards at all. We looked for some clothes and we got a big shock. All we had left was one single clean sock. Things were now grim and some help was required. We think that our fun had finally expired. We banged on the door for our parents to awake. We needed to tell them we made a mistake. There were things that we know that we found out today. There are jobs to be done before we can play. Our parents were right. There have to be chores. If you help with ours, we'll help with yours. Eat our own dinner, pick up our clothes, keep our rooms clean and wipe our own nose. Early to bed, a little less noise, rinse our own dishes and pick up our toys. Our parents were happy to hear what we said and decided that now get back out of bed. We told them we missed them. We missed them a lot. It's not what we did, but what we did not. We then all agreed, new rule to uphold, listen to your parents and do what you're told.